so last day we were discussing the various aspects of your uh, bioethical issues associated with uh, various biotechnological applications right we have talked about the various approaches the utility approach the right approach and all different types of approach okay so we have also discussed the bioethics of your gene therapy gene therapy and uh, whether it is ethical or not whether we need to do or not and also bioethics of your cloning so today we will be discussing some ethical issues which is related to cloning and uh, you know that uh, this issues uh, are this issues are first is your religious objections religious objection what is religious objection religious objection is man's effort to become immortal and play with god so man are trying to trying to control the uh, control the birth right which is a natural process and man is trying to produce different types of manipulated human being by manipulation of the gene manipulated human being means in the manipulation in the intelligence level in the beauty level so they are basically from the religious point of view they are playing with the god's decision the god's creation so that is why that is one important thing then cloning contradicts human nature and dignity of course human i will not talk about dignity rather i will talk about identity so when we are talking of uh, when we are uh, uh, when we are having a normal method of reproduction right so we have a particular identity we have a particular natural process in which variations is inculcated so that is the human nature so human nature will undergo sexual reproduction to produce variation and offspring so when we are doing cloning when we are doing genetic modification first of all i am changing their identity identity sequence and also we are also contradicting with the human nature producing children without fertilization i told you from the very beginning that producing children without fertilization fertilization brings about variation you know that the changing environment we have to also change with the changing environment you know the pathogens are becoming stronger and stronger one of the greatest example is the corona virus it's it it is much more having this is a type of this is also causing some influenza like symptoms but the transmission rate is much more faster than an influenza virus and people are saying as well that the two different corona virus two different corona viral strain has joined merged to form a chimeric strain so the this is actually uh, 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 the the uh, the climate is changing the environment is changing so we have to cope up with this and for that we have to have a variation so if you don't have variation you have same genetic constituent you will have the same kind of disease and of course your longevity and also you cannot cope up with the changing environment you will not be able to survive the changing environment next is exploitation of animals during research and cloning that is important when you are cloning of course you are playing with many many embryos and also you know that in artificial uh, in in vitro fertilization in uh, in the if i will take the embryos right in designer we will take the embryos and manipulate so there the embryos are being killed so you are killing the embryos you are doing hit and trial with them so you are basically killing an unborn which is unethical death of more than 90% of the offspring from cloning so you understand that ultimately you are producing to make them die which is very very unethical higher chances of cancer infection and other disabilities in cloned animals of course there will be disabilities there will be chances of cancer because there is no variation right you have the same kind of genetic sequence like that of your parent so if the parent is suffering from colon cancer the child will also suffer cloned organism are often biologically damaged so it may happen or may not but usually says that the cloned organism can be biologically damaged so next we will move on to the other major issues to bioethics so next is your socio economic issues 
So the various social issues that are raised by the use of biotechnology. The first one, let's question yourself. When I am uh, taking the class and you are listening to it, please question yourself. Will the benefits of genetic engineering and molecular biotechnology be available when to richer people or will be universal? If you think conceptually, when you do these experiments in your laboratory, you actually invest a huge amount of resource. So when you are investing huge amount of resource, what is happening? What is ultimately happening? When you are using this huge amount of resource, your production, your, the, the particular product becomes costlier. So will the whole society be able to be benefited from it? Will it only reach to the creamy, uh, uh, creamy layer of the society? Or it will go to every individual of the society? That is a very big question. If you go to genetic engineering, sorry, gene therapy, if you go to stem cell therapy, people who are more mediocre will not be able to go for it. So it is ultimately not a solution to the problem of the society. With the advancement of research in the area of agriculture, will this new technique overlook the conventional farming practice? So the new technique which is coming up, the genetic modification, will be overcoming the farming, normal farming practice? Will the company stop doing the terminator gene technology? Because if they do, if they stop doing it, they will be at a loss. So they will inculcate the terminator gene in their seeds and the farmer has to go again and again to buy it. So it will again become costlier. And of course, farmer has to revert back to its normal farming practice rather than those uh, uh, advanced practice. Will it be the case in future for medicinal therapies that are based on molecular biotechnology will surpass the equally potential and effective conventional treatment? See, conventional treatment are so easy. We can affordable, right? But these are advanced treatment. So, whether this advanced treatment will overcome the conventional treatment. When you have, when you have cancer, instead of radiation therapy, will you go for the gene therapy? So that is a question. So until and unless we can surpass, or we can, sub, uh, we, can uh, we can, uh, uh, we can surpass the potential and effective conventional treatment, just saying and doing is not enough. Finance to such advanced area of biotechnology will cause hindrance to the funding of important and useful technologies in other areas. More money today is being spent on rare genetic disorder than to prevent malaria. Very valid point, you know. People are thinking about those diseases which are rare. They are having so many different kind of therapies, antisense therapy, gene therapy, and this and that for rare disorder. But what about those diseases which is killing so many people and it is so frequent, like that of malaria? What new drugs have been discovered for malaria? What new therapies, intervention has been discovered for dengue? Have you ever thought of? No, we have not thought of. So that is why it is the most unfortunate part in the sector of research that people are researching on those areas which have actually have answers which have which are rare which could be which could be uh, 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 which is not that much important because people are not falling sick with that but those diseases with which the people are falling sick so frequent people are least interested to research on it. Socio-legal issues. So these are some of the socio-legal issues. So the release of GMO in the environment or farm trials must be monitored because lack of supervision and regulation can lead to illegal uh, lead to illegal practices around the India. So first is erosion of public accountability due to transfer of novel technology from public to private sector. First point. No legal bindings 
from the FDA for mandatory labeling of GMO. This point I am repeating again and again. So FDA has not put any mandatory labeling of GMO. So people will again be in darkness that whether they are taking a wild type variety food or a genetically modified food. Genetic engineering is being used for creation of biological warfare through the development of dreadful virus and bacteria which can cause an epidemic and intricate a genetic arm race and uh, has, this has to be legal ban to stop such kind of inhuman applications of biotechnology. This is the most inhuman applications of biotechnology because, because, because we generate dreadly viruses, dreadly bacteria. We don't know how to uh, cope up with it, but we generate for the biological warfare. And once it is being, by chance, being exposed to the environment, it becomes epidemic, rather it becomes pandemic throughout the world. So we have to, this is one of the deadliest application of biotechnology, which the scientists need to be very cautious of. Next is environmental issues. Careless release of genetically engineered microorganisms can cause damage of the ecology. Different organizations under biosafety have made it mandatory to release GMO under proper regulation. We have learned about Cartagena protocol. And you have to follow the biosafety guidelines following the Cartagena protocol. So you have to follow the Cartagena protocol for the con uh, uh, planned release of GMO. Because GMO is a modified form of microorganism. So micro, not microorganism, organism. So it can pose any danger. It become exotic. It can become a voracious predator. Really start inhibiting biodiversity. It can have allergen, toxicant, it which can cause the uh, toxicity and allergenicity to the different aspects, different components of the environment. So many things can come into it. GM products are live entities. So they pose danger to environment because they can reproduce and migrate and spread. So they can even reproduce, migrate and spread. So one has to be very cautious about it. Introduction of novel types into foreign habitats may disturb natural equilibrium. I told you this very uh, from the very beginning that when you are manipulating a particular organism, you are producing an exotic species. You don't know when you release this exotic species, that whether it will be maintaining equilibrium with the other biodiversity or it will not be able to maintain the equilibrium, it will multiply at a voracious rate and preventing the other biodiversity, other plants to grow. So this will ultimately lower the number of biodiversity, right? Next is unforeseen and undesirable characteristics can occur in novel species through genetic engineering. So you know that some different undesirable characteristics may be inculcated by genetic engineering. Unacceptable transmission of genes as genetic material to other hosts. It is very important. This is very, very important because I told you, you have prepared a pest resistant plant. This particular pest resistant plant have a pest resistant gene. So if by gene flow they move to a weed, the weed becomes pest resistant. So you will not be able uh, so that becomes, that means the weed becomes a higher quality and we don't want weed to be grown in our biodiversity or in our land, in our agricultural field. So weed will grow. So that is a wrong transmission of the gene. The production of genetically engineered organism in large scale will reduce natural genetic diversity. Genetic diversity found in animal breeds, plant breeds is the foundation of ongoing continuous evolution selection of stock by farmers and breeders. So you understand that when you go for more and more genetic engineering, you just forget about your the natural biodiversity, your original biodiversity, your wild type variety. So slowly, in from the ecosystem, the wild type variety will just flash off, will remove, and instead there will be modified variety. Health and safety issue. This is very important point. Now, health and safety issue, like if I say bovine growth hormone, this growth hormone is a genetically engineered growth hormone, has resulted in, in increased disease in mastitis in cow. So you have inflammation of mammary glands in cow. 
by this bovine growth hormone they are given growth hormone right for milking purpose and many other purpose so that results in mastitis in cow there are reports of user of genetically engineered insulin collapsing to unconsciousness this is very important you know that those people who are taking genetically engineered insulin they have to take food 10 minutes before 15 minutes before and then they have to take this particular medicine yes has to so that is one of the important thing use of synthetic tryptophan resulting in various symptoms like severe muscle pain if we ban later but this has questions and risk of bioengineered products so synthetic tryptophan has resulted in muscular pain so this is one of the side effect which is has occurred by this particular genetically engineering uh, engineered product use of recombinant human growth hormone in children has linked to incidence of very grave disease leukemia and melanoma so see dwarfism is not a disease right it is not a disease it is not a grave problem <coughs> so for that if you are inculcating growth hormone and those individuals get melanoma and leukemia then that is a great problem so that is one of the very important aspect use of bt endotoxin gene for pest resistant crop can be linked to stunted growth in the plant and possibility of antibiotic marker gene and known allergen getting passed to human food chain so by this you know that if every vector has antibiotic resistant gene so you are inculcating antibiotic resistance into the environment right antibiotic marker gene allergen they enter into the food chain and enter into the various categories or various trophic levels of the food chain so ultimately from all this point new people need to decide new people need to think that which particular methodology to be applied which particular biotechnological application to be applied and how to be applied and when to be applied keeping all the ethical issues into mind into consideration so if you have any question you please uh, put comments in my google classroom and moreover we will have our live classes in which you can we can discuss about this matter and can get your views as well